Councillor Osborne. Councillor Tracy. I'm sorry, Councillor Osborne. Mr Mayor, I would just like to inform the Council that I intend to join in the Council at the appropriate time. Oh. Mr Mayor, can I also say that I intend to do the same at the appropriate time after that? Councillor, third time lucky, perhaps. It's crossed. Um, question number one to the leader, please. Um, I thank Councillor Osborne for his question. Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, him on his personal election. And uh, I'm sure that uh, the outcome of the Grain Bee result wasn't a surprise to us, but might have been a surprise to him. Uh, but I also congratulate uh, him on him being re-elected as leader of opposition. Some of us welcome it on this side, and I'm sure some of us, some of your side, welcome it too. Going, turning to the substantive question, oh, well, you know, it's never, never, never a, a good moment to say the obvious, but uh, there, here it is. Council Osborne asks about the council's challenges in facing the uh, financial pressures, and of course, he forgets in asking his question that we are where we are because they put us there. And if they had done it better, if only they had managed it better, uh, uh, we would not be where we are. And, and of course, we, we hear now that um, the Deputy Leader of the Labour Party would like to get us out of it by raising taxes, um, which was kind of something that uh, in the last election campaign, certainly Councillor Osborne and his colleagues said they wouldn't do. So that's an interesting uh, uh, dilemma for them, I guess. But turning to, to, the, to the next four years, yes, we do face uh, further reductions, and we will approach that in the same way, by putting the interests of our ratepayers and our residents first and foremost, and we will make sure that we provide can, and continue to provide them value for money at the kind of price that they can afford without, and, and then taking extreme care that we protect the frontline services wherever possible. All members of the council are always welcome to suge make suggestions on how to find savings, including the other side. But of course, having spent four years uh, listening to their uh, regular votes against savings, um, I live in hope. Mr. Mayor. Indeed. Um, first of all, if I may, Mr. Mayor, I would like to uh, I note the leader's gracious congratulations. If I may, I return his personal congratulations, both on his re-election and not being ousted as leader of the majority group. <laughs> and um, uh, secondly, endorse his congratulations to all councillors on their election. But my question is this. I wonder if he can be candid this evening and give us a categorical yes or no. Will the majority party consider the following three options in the council's finances? One, in their consolidation of council land, consideration of, in the long term, selling the town hall. Two, uh, embarking upon a joint procurement program which will involve uh, getting the council, the, this borough, involved in bodies such as the West London Alliance or some similar confederation of boroughs. And three, phasing out this council's £3 million annual performance-related pay programme. Well, I'm always candid, and I'll seek to be candid on this occasion too. We had a debate about uh, when the sale of this town hall was mentioned by the party opposite, and I said then, uh, and I re I'm sure Councillor Osborne rec recalls it, our approach to the way we hold and manage our land remains unchanged and will continue to remain unchanged. I am not ruling it out, but I see significant and fundamental reasons why this town hall as the heart of our civic uh, service to the, to the borough remains much loved asset for, for, for the people and it is a tall struggle to try and convince people who love this wonderful listed building uh, uh, to, to contemplate the idea that this could be turned into an exclusive hotel surrounded by a one-way street. I don't think that is a, a recipe for, for, for good planning, but if ch times change and the circumstances demand it, we will not flinch from considering it. As for the question of uh, joint procurement, well, of course, he knows, he jolly well knows that we continue to jointly procure with whatever borough 
that we can jointly procure with, regardless of their, uh, their, their political color. And we will continue to look for opportunities for joint procurement wherever possible. But what is fundamental, for t in, in the fundamental important for the Council is to make sure that joint procurement is not a fad. It is, has to continue to provide good value for money. It has, to it has got to have the right synergy for what we want to do for our borough and what our residents expect from us. And as for the performance-related pay for those offices, well, again, we have had a very clear position for, for, for a while now that officers work hard, we expect them to work hard, and we measure their, their rewards by the work they put into the council. What we have in the last uh, performance uh, subcommittee done is to tighten uh, both the the kind of deliverable um, targets for chief officers, and we've also made sure that those targets are open to public uh, uh, knowledge. So there are some changes, but I think the basic thrust is that reward should follow performance, not just because they've done X number of years that they get X number of years of uh, uh, rides up a scale. Supplementary. Councillor Cuff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, does the leader agree with me that surely a more pertinent question is how the opposition do their sums. Um, time and time again, they have opposed the uh, positive savings that we've tried to make to, to deal with the problems that local government has inherited from the Labour government. Yet, at the same time, they pledge to a low spending authority. If they really think that selling a listed building is going to add up in their view, then they've got uh, a nasty shot coming to them. I thank Councillor Cuff for his supplementary, but I, I'm not surprised that uh, they can't add up, and I'm not surprised that they don't understand some of the challenges that, that build, this building poses in terms of extracting the kind of mythical values they think that this building holds. What they seem to think that this, is, this building represents some kind of bottomless pit. Let me just say one thing about this building. It actually does represent for a lot of people an important heart of our civic affairs. To, 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 to move to some nondescript shed or a glass and uh, a steel tower somewhere elsewhere in the borough would have some significant losses in terms of the prestige of the borough. Furthermore, I mean, this is at the heart and the center of our borough. Locating it at some, uh, uh, you know, either in Nine Elms or in Rahamter or in Tooting would mean an enormous number of our residents would find that access to the, what Tran Hall represents would become more difficult. So there are some challenges, and I'm, I'm not surprised that they've ducked the challenges like they've ducked the challenges of making savings. Councillor Osborne. Question number two to the leader, please. I thank Councillor Osborne for his question, and it's a relatively full answer, and I think there are two points I'd like to draw, draw to, to the members' attention. One is the, the opening sentence that no family has been left without an offer of a place. Our performance in finding school places for ones of children has been exceptionally good. In fact, not only has our, our search for school places for our, our youngsters been exceptionally good, the schools in which they get the place is an exceptionally good record. As the tail end of the answer suggests, 95% of our schools are, are, are outstanding or, or, and provide choice and diversity of the type parents seek. One other point that I want to draw out is the slight unfortunate situation in, in Ellsfield where, where some parents are offered a, a, spa, a place at the Mosaic Jewish Primary School, which was obviously very far, and also being a faith school wasn't necessarily appropriate. That I, I, I regret, and, and, and I say so in my answer. Supplement. Uh, well, uh, if I may, before I get to my question, just um, acknowledge the leader's honesty in his comments about the Mosaic Jewish Primary School, um, and such things should be noted, I believe, in this council chamber. But my question is this. Uh, has he, first of all, forgotten that actually we have supported free schools in this borough when we thought certain parts of the borough needed the places? And secondly, can he return to the body of my question, which was about the future and not about what is actually happening now? And will, could he, for example, commit to a review of catchment areas in some sections of the borough uh, where we know we are uh, facing, uh, we're going to face a crisis in the number of uh, places in the schools available? I think, um, I thank Councillor Osborne for his supplementary. I think um, you should be quite careful before 
asking for a review of catchment areas. It's a bit like asking for a review of control parking zones. People are used to a certain kind of division and plan their, their family life and their house buying and all sorts of things on that basis. And if the council walks in and, and preemptorily changes those boundaries, there are, there are going to be some difficulties. But as far as looking to the future is concerned, like we've always done, predicting the number of people that might be in the borough at a given time is not, as the, uh, the original answer says, is not a science. It is as good as you can get in predictions based on demographic trends and, and so on. And we have generally made a very, very good fist of this because by and large, at the end of the first round, people do find places for for their children. They may not find the place they ideally want, but they do find places for the children. But looking to the future, what are we doing? We are actually opening a new free school in Earlsville, not very far from, uh, uh, from the area, well, right in the area that Councillor Osborne's question is about. We have got places coming up the Jewish Mosaic School, which may not suit everyone, but will obviously suit some. The Rutherford School in Ballam will provide more spaces. And of course, there's a free school, academy school in, in his own ward, which we were all at at its, its first year of operation. So we are planning where we can, building primary schools, places, and making sure that the youngsters who expect and the, from this council a choice of, or a right choice of a primary school place get it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Second supplemental. Would the leader consider inviting the former Wandsworth and, in fact, Northcote resident, Nicky Morgan, to visit schools within the borough to celebrate the choice and diversity available? Um, of course, that choice and diversity particularly enhanced by the free school and academies program championed by his predecessor. I thank Councillor Dawson for his supplement, and of course I'd be delighted, delighted to, uh, to invite Nikki Morgan to come to the borough that she already knows well and will, will, I'm sure, enjoy a return visit. But actually what she'll learn when she comes, and that is the critical thing, is not. But this council, ever since it took, over, took, took the running of education, has year on year improved school standards and has not rested until our goal is that each school, every school, should be an outstanding school. Not only are our, our normal sort of uh, uh, maintained schools outstanding, but our special needs schools are outstanding too. We have an exceptional record of which we can all be proud and it's worth sharing it with Nicky Morgan, and not only just what sort of driving up standards in what we, we manage and we run and, and we influence, but also in, in the kind of diverse sector that Wandsworth has got. Not only kind of uh, uh, state education, but private education, which makes an enormous contribution to the choice and diversity for our residents. Councillor Cooper. for her question and in answering I'd just say that you know Justine Greening is an exceptional member of Parliament and when she found herself cornered by residents of, uh, uh, of Roehampton over an issue that uh, they felt the council was guilty of she championed their cause and, 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 and came to me about what she heard at the couple of meetings she held had with the, the residents I have written her, uh, my, in my response written, that of course the barriers were never a, a, a given, the removal of barriers were never a given thing. It was an option for residents to shape if they wanted to. And since they have rejected it, I am pleased that I removed the, to remove them from the final version of the master plan coming out in, in autumn. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Um, when will the people of Roehampton be told? Um, I was actually at a meeting of the Roehampton Forum on Friday morning and there was a lot of um, disquiet there, people for and people against, and it would be good to know that they'll be told as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank Councillor Cooper for her supplementary. Yes, of course, you're right that the, the having made that decision, we should. Uh, the fact of the matter is that this uh, request from Justine Greening came in a, in a letter to me and, and my reply went in a letter to her. She was away uh, uh, doing her ministerial duties and I've now been able to speak to her and uh, I'm sure that she will want to convey her own messages to the residents she's in, been in contact with and, and we will certainly be making sure that the press office makes the obvious uh, uh, press release soon. Supplementary. Second. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, 
Does the leader realise um, the strength of feeling amongst those without cars in Roehampton is up to 50% in favour of the proposed extension of the K3 bus route up Highcliffe Drive um, to provide much easier access to Queen Mary's Hospital, Asda, Barnes Station, Kingston Hospital. The people who um, Justin Greening hasn't met yet are the people, all the people who live in Tunworth Crescent, Sherfield Gardens and Tangley Grove who have to catch at least two buses to, and cross two main roads each way on their journeys which are nightmares for mums with kids and the disabled. Uh, I thank Councillor McKinney for her question and, and, and welcome, welcome to the cut and thrust of the question time. It's not as exciting as it's elsewhere but uh, nonetheless it does a job. Um, I am absolutely aware of, of, of the transport shortfall in, in that area, actually across Roehampton Estates as a whole, virtually, and which is why my answer very carefully preserves the possibility that if TfL is willing to, to extend the K3 route, that TfL would be, in a sense, be, be able to, uh, for, to do a consultation and we would uh, want to help them do it. I'm absolutely aware that uh, going to Roham parts of Roehampton, apart from getting into Danebury Avenue, which is relatively easy, other parts are very, very difficult to get to. And for, th for those without cars, you're absolutely right. Uh, and, and, and actually, extending K3 down to uh, uh, down Roehampton Lane would, would add to other people's choices in accessing Barn Station. So I have preserved that possibility, and if residents come out in the numbers that you think they will come out in, then I am sure that uh, uh, the TfL consultation will be a success. Thank you. Councillor Thomas? Question number four to the leader. Councillor Thomas for his um, question. And I think um, if this question was entirely about um, helping this council to find savings, I might say, that's a fair cops, and let's look at it. But I am... Uh, absolutely convinced that this is nothing of the sort given the track record of the party opposite in not finding savings that there is a catch in this somewhere but but let's let's look at it this way when the, when the Labour Party forced local authorities didn't give them a choice but forced local authorities to, to introduce the kind of uh, uh, a, a strong leader model or an elected mayor model we with bipartisan agreement came up with a system which is a hybrid between what was and what they expected us to have. This hybrid model is almost a mirror image of what existed. It's very difficult to tell the former from, uh, apart from what we have now. And it has worked. It has endured over the last 14 odd years. And I don't see any reason why we should cast away what has worked without, without further prop and proper thought. But I would only do that if I was convinced that Councillor Thomas's motives were not to try and find work for many hands. Um, well, I refer Councillor Convinia back to his earlier statement, really, uh, that uh, all members of the opposition are always welcome uh, to propose state, uh, savings. So, frankly, I find it a bit rich that... Uh, uh, this one isn't given consideration uh, just on the basis of our alleged uh, motives. Um, does he not think that he's being too quick to actually uh, reject a genuine proposal uh, for savings, which could actually help us avoid a reduction in the number of opportunities for democratic accountability and debate? And I know that uh, Councillor Govindia likes to think of himself as a strong leader, but actually... Wouldn't the mark of strong leadership be to take a proper look at this, uh, to make a proper assessment of the costs and benefits, uh, both in financial terms, but also uh, for our ability uh, to be a democratic forum? And will he commit to do that now? Um, Councillor Thomas, I thank you for your supplementary and your suggestion that I go around uh, saying that I'm a strong leader will come as a surprise to my colleagues, but certainly come as a surprise to me. I, 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 I never have claimed that I'm a strong leader. Far from it, I am a, I'm a leader who wants to represent the interests of the people of this borough with the support of my colleagues. Just 
the point about is this a savings exercise or is this a political posture? Let me pose you the question that if you were yet that concerned that this was a saving exercise, you have not in any way identified what the potential savings might be. Given that we have as many committees at OEC levels, unlike many authorities which are fewer, and we would presumably in the committee system have as many uh, committees as we currently have, please tell me where the savings might come from. Given that each committee would have a chairman, whilst not a cabinet member, would have a chairman, the workload would transfer from somebody called cabinet member to somebody called chairman, how and where would you think that you'd find savings? And if you're that concerned about the savings, perhaps you could actually look at what you can in fact do to support the savings that we have put through in the past and we, which we will put through in the future. Second supplementary, Mr. Does the leader accept, though, that there is one absolutely key difference between the current system and the committee system, which is that in the previous system, the committees were decision-making bodies, whereas now they are not? And does the leader agree that there is a very strong argument that suggests that what we actually have here is the worst of both worlds? We could either have a committee system in which we could genuinely work cross-party to develop policy for the future for this council as a non-decision-making body, or we can have decision-making committees in which case political whipping and political uh, activity is entirely appropriate. At current, we have, decision we have uh, committees where uh, even if the committee comes to a view, the cabinet is under no uh, duty to accept that view, and on a number of occasions the cabinet has refused to accept the view from committees, which of course would not be the case in service committees. Uh, but further than that, uh, when the leader says the system has worked for 14 years, can I ask him for a single example of where anybody's life in Wandsworth has got at all better for all of the effort that we've put into scrutiny? In, in contrast, with where the way scrutiny is used in many councils where it is developing policy for the future and making a real difference for the quality of life in those areas. I thank Councillor Grimston for uh, supplementary. I know that Councillor Grimston has always held the view that the committee system that we currently have doesn't work for him. He has not flinched from saying that elsewhere and he said that today. I don't believe that I have wasted 14 years of my life coming to this town hall without making a difference, an iota's difference, to the life chances or, or, or the life outcomes of one or the many residents of this borough. I don't believe I have wasted my time, and I don't believe many of my colleagues have wasted their time. I think people have a romantic notion of what the committee system was like. There are not that many people in this council who have operated a committee system, but certainly I lived through a committee system too. There was whipping, just as it is now. There was a kind of a chance to overturn the committee decision, just as there is now. It just required a little, little more hoops to go, a few more hoops to go through. It, yes, sure, it made a decision, but it didn't make an irrevocable decision that stuck all the way through because it was always capable of being changed. And I know that when, I, when the committee system operated, a number of times the committee votes were altered in a full council meeting. So there is this kind of romantic idea that the committee system is one of those places where we will all love each other and come with a collegiate view about the cross-party divide and, and they will be dancing in joy in the streets of Wandsworth. Far from it. Personal explanation, Mr. Mayor. I think I may have been misunderstood. I, I did not say that this council has wasted 14 years. I said that overview and scrutiny has wasted 14 years. And as far as I'm aware, the leader has not served on overview and scrutiny for the last 14 years. And therefore, of course, I was not suggesting that those who uh, are in cabinet positions have wasted their, their point of view. It was the uh, operation of overview and scrutiny, which was my point, which may be wrong, but that was not my point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did, in fact, say that I hadn't wasted my time, but I also said that other councillors hadn't. Taking 